outstanding news guys, Ukrainian marines were able to cross Dnipro and secure even more bridgeheads and eliminated in the process 3433 Russians. At the same time, the forces decided to voluntarily destroy their own tanks and Putin looks like is ready to sacrifice everyone next month. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors, it's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, finally, we have our favorite battle babushkas back. And this time they are wearing the t-shirts with their favorite president Putin and they're begging him to do the presidential elections, to participate in the presidential elections 2024. They say we do not need any other president except you, our love, Putin, please go ahead, win and save our country from distress, destroy all the enemies of the Russian Federation. And in the end, they started dancing. And there are things, horrible things, that Putin wants to before even announcing his next presidential so-called campaign. So let's talk about this right now. And then we'll switch our attention to the south of Ukraine, where Ukrainian marines secured even more bridgeheads. And then we'll finalize everything in the east, where Russian soldiers decided to voluntarily destroy their own tanks. And so yes, so-called presidential elections in Russia are happening in the spring of 2024, and Putin not yet officially announced his candidacy. Why? One of the potential reasons is, is that the war in Ukraine, supposedly a three-day war, is still going on, and recently there has not been that many good news to announce to the Russian public. Also, Putin is doing his annual speech during New Year, so once again, nothing good he can say there too. For this reason, he kinda waits for something, it looks like, it definitely feels like. And since December is pretty much already next month, it is time for Putin to show some results. And pretty much exactly the same thing President Zelensky mentioned in his one of his most recent videos is that in the first half of December, pretty much next month, Putin will try to escalate things, most likely not publicly, but to say the least behind the scenes. Most likely even more soldiers will be sent to some concentrated areas, either in the east or in the south, let's be honest, most likely in the east around Avdiivka. Maybe some more conscriptions will happen and then those unfortunate soldiers will be sent to fight to Ukraine with absolute minimum knowledge of the modern warfare and all of this just to once again secure at least some gains which he can rely on and mention in his both presidential elections candidacy speech and during new year congratulations speech is that russians we together achieved something great we were able to liberate avdivka from these uh, ukrainians and I mean, you already know that the value of regular human life for Putin at this point is pretty much non-existent, it's almost equals zero. That is why I do not think he will have a problem ordering to recruit more soldiers. And definitely it will not be announced, it will not be the official mobilization. For this reason, let's see how many more young guys he's ready to sacrifice. But at this point, just for the sake of saying something good, it feels like he's ready to sacrifice everyone. In addition to that, Zelensky also mentioned that according to the defense intelligence of Ukraine, Russians are planning so-called Maidan 3 on the territory of Ukraine, which with the main goal is to pretty much destabilize the situation within the country, mainly within the authorities and military leadership, and also to try to replace Zelensky from his position as the president. And recently, to support his claims, the Russian leadership decided to release this video showing off their brand new hypersonic intercontinental ballistic missile called Avangard, which is obviously capable of carrying nuclear warheads. And the speed of this missile can reach more than 32,000 kilometers per hour. 
which pretty much means it can reach almost any point on our planet within 30 minutes and is practically impossible to intercept it. But obviously it cannot be that perfect. There is a disadvantage to this missile, because of its speed it gets hot extremely quick. That is why it is relatively easy to be spotted by satellites, radars and other electronic warfare equipment, which basically means the response of other countries will be swift. And so yes, now as promised let me give you a very brief update from the south, where Ukrainians were able to secure even more bridgeheads and started crossing Dnipro river, and then we'll switch our attention to the east. But guys, if you do not mind and if you do like this style of daily updating, can you please help me out? All you need to do, please, is to simply like this video and subscribe to my channel, it's that easy. Thank you so much. You can also follow me on Instagram, the weekend is here and I will follow some of you back. The link is down below. And so yes, the south. First stop let's make, unfortunately, once again in Odessa, because recently the local art museum was targeted by Russians. It has been severely damaged. But fortunately, in the last 24 hours, Ukrainian air defense was able to intercept 9 out of 10 Russian Shahid drones. Then, according to some locals, they were also able to hear some very loud noises coming from the Black Sea, and they even showed us this video. According to Russians, nothing significant happened. But just overall, speaking about the Russian Black Sea fleet, since the beginning of this war, 15 vessels were destroyed and 12 were either partially or severely damaged. Which, to be honest, is a massive result for Ukrainians, taking into consideration that not too many combat activities are happening on the water. Next, let's get back to the land, and according to the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, they released us this video of the compilation of most recent destructions of the Russian military vehicles and equipment, all of them were done using simple inexpensive drones. And by the way, guys, I have dozens and even hundreds more photos and videos every single week, which I'm simply not able to show on YouTube. That is why if you want to see this full uncensored versions of this footage, please go ahead and check my Patreon. The support starts only as little as $4 per month and there is one week of free access for every single one of you to see if you like it or not. The link is down below. As we get back to the south of Ukraine, specifically to Zaporozhye frontline, according to the most recent report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainians resumed their counteroffensive activities next to Robotiny and reported that they were able to advance a little bit to the west of this settlement and also a little bit closer to Novoprakopivka. But most importantly is that Ukrainian marines are now even more than ever successfully crossing Dnipro river to the left side of Kherson region and establishing even more bridgeheads across Dnipro. Zelensky himself even shared with us several photos of these combat activities and as you can see there is almost little to none resistance from the Russians and as soon as Ukrainians start being on the land, well the very first things they start to do is to deploy reconnaissance drones to, to establish to find the position of Russians and plan their next attacks. And during these crossings, Ukrainian marines were able to fully eliminate 1,216 Russian soldiers and injure 2,217 of them, which basically means that 3,433 Z soldiers are no longer combat operational. And at this very moment, the main priority of current stage of this cross Dnipro raids is to push Russians as far as possible from the river, so that the civilian infrastructure on another Ukrainian part of Kherson region will be outside of the range for the Russian artillery. And so yes, now let me give you a similar quick update from the east. And first of all, as always, we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, which claims that Russians continue their offensive along kupiansk svatovik the front line and also next to Avdiivka. And as a result of these combat activities, both Russians and Ukrainians were able to change the front line accordingly, as you can see from this map next to Yahidne. And also Russians reportedly were able to advance a little bit closer to the north of Avdiivka. As you can see, this is how much land they're able to capture in the last 24 hours. 
Next we have a video also reportedly from the Eastern front lines where one of the most recently developed Ukrainian drones called Punisher, which is extremely resistant to the electronic warfare. It was able to discover and point to the target of Russian electronic warfare system called Borisoglebsk 2, which is reportedly estimated to cost 200 million dollars. And Ukrainians successfully destroyed it, which shows you the absolute significance and importance of this Ukrainian drone called Punisher and just shows you that modern warfare, how much things rely on such drones. But wait, there is more, because Ukrainian Azov Brigade released their own compilation of Ukrainian drones also destroying even more Russian military equipment and vehicles. And then is the brand new video of Ukrainian soldiers fighting for Bakhmut, which has been released recently, and is also a compilation of pretty much the most intense combat moments. All these videos fully and uncensored, once again, you'll be able to find on my Patreon. In addition to that, as we get closer to Avdiivka, reportedly, according to Ukrainians, they were able to destroy an assault group of Russians along with their tank, trying to advance next to Stepove. And probably one of the most interesting things that happened recently is that Russian soldiers decided to voluntarily starting to destroy their own tanks. But yeah, okay, let's be honest, they do not just destroy them for no reason. They just put a lot of explosives inside, put them in drive and sent across the field, hoping to destroy Ukrainian positions. But Russians themselves, they were heavily mining those fields. Ukrainians were doing exactly the same. So I will not be surprised knowing that Russians knew that these fields were full of mines. And that is why whenever they sent an uncontrollable tank full of explosives across those fields, it will be pretty much 0% chance that it will be able to cross it without self-destroying. And guess what? This is exactly what happened. Pretty much the entire tank fully operational tank was wasted for nothing. And ultimately, here is the picture of yet another Russian multiple launch rocket system called Tor, destroyed in Donetsk region. So, pretty much, yes, as you can see, a lot of Russian military vehicles were destroyed during this week, and then Ukrainians started to be extremely successful crossing the Dnipro River, establishing way more comfortable bridgeheads than they did in the past. So there is a very, very big opportunity that Ukrainians might achieve some sort of success in the Kherson region very soon. And also taking into consideration that Putin needs some victory before the end of the year, so he might recruit more soldiers. There is a pretty good chance that we might see some escalation in this war within the next several weeks. So if you don't want to miss any of these potentially crucial and life-changing updates, can you please subscribe to my channel? It only takes one click. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support and see you on Tuesday.